Hey everyone, welcome to Grab the MD. Uh, so I have been getting these questions about how to use a QBank efficiently for maximum impact on your step one score and which QBanks do I personally recommend or the ones I used when I was preparing for my step one exam. Uh, we all know UWorld is the standard, right? It's a must do. So let's keep it aside for a minute and talk about the other QBanks you can use as your second or maybe the third practice source. Uh, I personally used UWorld, Kaplan QBank and Rx QMax throughout my step one prep and I have some recommendations but please keep in mind your mileage may vary so you can fine tune according to your preferences or use entirely different resources which suit you the best. Uh, Alright, which ones to use and why? Uh, it really depends on your pre-existing knowledge of basic sciences, uh, familiarity with first aid for USMLE step 1 and the duration of your prep time. Uh, let's say you are starting from scratch. RxQMax is the best way to go in that case. You review a topic in first aid, then go straight to RxQMax and do all the possible questions on that topic in a timed mode. Uh, this will help you understand how the topic could be tested and maybe retain the knowledge long term. But please remember this rule only applies to newbies. Uh, you know, the ones who are trying to test the waters and see how things are. If you are using RxQMax for practice, you should do it timed and random. If you have medium level and enough prep time, uh, I would suggest doing at least two QBanks for practice. Uh, preferably starting with Kaplan QBank and then moving to UWorld. Uh, so, how do you use a QBank effectively? Number one, and most importantly, doing all the questions timed and randomly. Starting slow at first, uh, maybe doing 20 or 30 questions a day, this will get you into routine and you will have enough time to annotate your first aid. You can increase the number of questions done during a day, uh, you know down the road once you become familiar with the topics uh, it's most important that you read through all the answers not just correct ones this way you are exposing yourself to a lot more concepts because each explanation uh, has most probably a different concept so instead of uh, doing only 2500 or 2600 concepts by reading just the right answers. If you are also reading through the wrong answers, you multiply that number by 5. That's how many topics you are potentially doing when you also read through the wrong answers. Uh, this will also help you write down differential points when you annotate your first date. Uh, so how do you annotate? There are several ways I used and I'm sure you will develop your own as you keep going. Let's say we were doing a question about celiac disease. So the first thing we do is go to the index of first aid and find where celiac disease is or use the search functionality if you are using a PDF. Uh, the first thing I would note down is how to tell apart celiac disease from other malabsorption syndromes. Uh, you know, if we are doing a question on celiac disease, chances are the wrong answers mention the other malabsorption syndromes. And the wrong explanations give us hints uh, how to pick the right one. For example, celiac disease gets better with gluten-free diet, but not tropical sprue, which presents pretty much the same, especially on questions. Uh, but gets better with antibiotics. Celiac disease has negative d xylose absorption but not pancreatic insufficiency, so I will add that point as well. 
tropical sprue affects the entire small intestine, uh, whereas celiac involves the proximal small intestine only. Nowadays, the examiners avoid using buzzwords or questions. They tend to describe the findings. So, for example, instead of mentioning dermatitis herpetiformis, they could say an itchy rash on extensor surfaces. So maybe write that down as well. You could also write down a missing concept very briefly. Uh, for example, a beta lipoproteinemia, which also causes malabsorption. So add a few points about that to your page. Or you can also add a few facts that apply to all the malabsorption syndromes. Uh, for example, the first step in workup for any malabsorption syndrome is doing the Sudan 3 stool stain. Or the consequences of vitamins we lose. For example, low vitamin K results in bleeding, uh, low B12 can cause ataxia and megaloblastic anemia, uh, low iron can cause anemia and pallor. Try adding these extra bits from your memory. And even if you think it's not needed because you already know this stuff, uh, note it down anyway, okay? Because uh, this is an effective way of repetition. Another way for repetition is to quickly look at all the other pages where celiac disease is mentioned. For example, it's associated with primary biliary cholangitis. Uh, it's mentioned in the dermatology section and so on and so forth. Uh, doing a topic this way will help you review all the different concepts that are linked somehow and you will understand how to integrate uh, which will help you answer more questions. Remember, repetition does not mean sitting down and reading first aid, first page all the way to the last over and over. That's ineffective and waste of time. Instead, practice lots of questions timed and randomly because banks are designed to have spaced repetition of topics. Look up and annotate your first aid when you are going through explanations at the end of the day. So these, these are some tips that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I wish you all the best with your prep. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions in the comments or on my Facebook page and Twitter handle. Uh, do check out my other videos and don't forget to subscribe for more content.